Hey, welcome to the shop. So there are so many different options out there when it comes to picking a welding machine, it can be so overwhelming. I thought rather than going over a particular make and model, it might be better to talk about seven factors you should consider when you're looking at buying a welding machine so you can make a good decision. The first factor to consider is what welding process you want to run. And this will be right on the specs because most machines now or many will run more than one welding process. Now, if you're not familiar with things like MIG, STIC, or TIG, the different welding processes out there, I have the perfect video for you. I'll link down in the description below. But let's just touch on a few things here today. So stick welding is going to be really good for home and farm repairs uh, where you're welding steel mainly from about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters on up. Now it does produce some welding fumes, uh, so you wanna have some good ventilation and it leaves a slag coating you'll have to chip off, so it's not ideal for auto body work. Now as far as difficulty to learn, stick welding is medium. It's easier than some, but harder than others. Next, let's talk about MIG welding. Now MIG welding is gonna be the easiest process to learn, and these two machines right here are MIG welders, and this one right here is a flux core welder, which sometimes they'll call the machines a gasless MIG. Now, the gasless MIG will leave a coating of slag and produce fumes like stick welding will because it still uses a flux to protect the molten metal from the air. Now, when it comes to these dedicated little flux core machines, they're great for occasional use around the home, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of welding, I'd get a dedicated uh, MIG welder, even if you're gonna run flux core wire at first. Um, the other thing that I've found with these flux core uh, machines is the ones that have an inverter power supply work better than the ones that don't. So you might want to look for one with an inverter supply for these little flux core welders. Now when it comes to a dedicated MIG welder, this is going to cost more than one of these flux core welders or a stick welder, um, and it'll also be a little extra cost because you need a dedicated gas cylinder that holds a shielding gas to protect your weld from the atmosphere. Now the trade-off for that is you get a nicer clean weld um, without any slag to clean off. So it's a really good process for anything from really thin sheet metal, auto body work, it's ideal for that. It's great for general fabrication. So MIG welding is, is the right choice for a lot of people and it's the one I use most commonly. Materials for MIG welding, you can weld uh, steel, carbon steel is the most popular. You can also weld stainless steel or aluminum, though you know it's, it's difficult to go down too thin with those. One thing to keep in mind though is when you switch to those other materials, they each require a different type of shielding gas. So if you want to set up for all three, you're going to need a bunch of gas cylinders and that can get expensive real fast. Now let's talk about TIG welding. TIG welding is the most versatile and precise of the processes, but also the most difficult to learn. It's good for just about any material. You can weld steel, stainless steel, aluminum, titanium, magnesium, all sorts of different metals with TIG welding. And each of those materials can be welded with the same shielding gas so it's really versatile and very precise good for anything way down to really thin I've welded razor blades before uh, up to thick metal um, definitely my favorite process to run uh, though I don't run it quite as often as MIG welding one thing to keep in mind uh, with regards to your material on TIG welding is if you're looking to weld aluminum or also magnesium you're gonna need a machine that will output alternating current uh, like these two TIG welding machines and uh, you know one like this right here that only outputs direct current is going to be uh, really difficult to use with aluminum so I wouldn't recommend that so make sure you look for an AC or an alternating current machine if you want to be able to run aluminum. The next thing to consider is what kind of power supply or electrical main supply you have in your shop or garage. Do you have 120 volts or 240 volts available? Because like this buzz box here, this is only gonna run on 240 volts. Um, where others can run on only 120 volts like this flux core welder and that limits the output of the machine and then many will run on uh, more than one voltage like this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and that one will all run on 120 or 240 volts outlets. So that gives you the option to start out 
with 120 volts and then put in your outlet later and upgrade that. The other thing I really like about that is I can take it with me and so if I have my 240 volt outlet in the shop, I can get my welding done. I have more ability to weld thicker things or weld faster with higher amperage. But if I need to go help somebody out or I need to go do something on site somewhere, I can plug it right into 120 volts and still get some amount of ability out of the machines. The next thing to think about is portability. Are you gonna be taking this machine with you somewhere or is it just gonna sit in one place? Because I'll tell you what, I don't wanna be carrying this thing around, so if I'm gonna be stick welding and going places, I'm gonna want something more like this size. Not only is it small, I don't have to take a gas cylinder with me because with MIG welders or also TIG welders, you're gonna need to take a gas cylinder with you. That being said, if you have a MIG welder, you can always load in some flux core wire and do that. The next thing to consider is your material thickness. Now with stick welding, uh, the amperage of your machine is going to depend mostly on the diameter of rod that you're running or electrode. So uh, if you want to run, you know, everything only up to an eighth of an inch uh, electrode, a machine like this that outputs 160 amps will do just fine and you can run multiple passes. But if you want to put down more material at a time or a higher deposition rate, you'll want a higher amperage machine to be able to do that. Now, as far as uh, thickness goes with MIG welding, um, from my experience, a 115 or 120 volt MIG welder uh, is good usually up to about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch. And that's, you know, right around three to four, maybe five millimeters at the most um, that you're going to get a good reliable joint out of where these right here, if I run them on 240 volts, I can get, you know, up to three eighths of an inch. Now, if you are going to MIG weld a lot of really thick uh, items, I'd look into uh, setting up a machine that can run a spray transfer or even a pulse spray transfer. We won't go into those details here, but you might want to look at uh, spray transfer to run really thick things with MIG. Now, when it comes to TIG welding, um, your main limitation is going to be really running aluminum, at least that's what I've run into. This is a 200 amp machine, this one is 225 amps, and I can weld quarter inch thick aluminum or six millimeter thick aluminum uh, with these, but they're maxed out. So if you're going to be running a lot of thicker aluminum, you're probably going to want to look at a higher amperage uh, machine than these. Next, you need to look at your duty cycle of the machine. Duty cycle is what percentage of the time it can actually be welding and it's taken on a basis of 10 minutes. So if you have a 20% duty cycle, you can weld for two minutes and then you need to stop for eight to finish out that block of 10. So this becomes a, a big problem if you're welding all day long. Now, none of the machines that I have here have a really high duty cycle when the amperage is turned way up. Though when you run lower amperage, you get a longer duty cycle. You just need to look at that if that's important to you. The way that I work in my shop, it doesn't matter because I'm just doing a little bit of welding and then I'm cutting or fitting or moving something around. So I don't need a large duty cycle. Next, let's talk about some of the special features that you might like to have on your machines. So when it comes to stick welding machines, um, some of the nicer machines will have two different features. One of them is a hot start feature where you can turn up your amperage when uh, you strike your arc. And another one is called, uh, on the Miller machines, it's called dig, others call it arc force but essentially it will turn up your amperage a little higher for you. So those are two really nice features to have, though they're definitely not essential. Now with MIG welders, there aren't as many special features that are gonna be super meaningful, but a few that you might have are a uh, variable inductance setting. This machine has it, this one doesn't. And uh, you know, it's not, not that big of a deal to me. Also a reduced run-in speed can be helpful, but again, definitely not a game changer there. Just, just a minor help. Special features are gonna come into play mostly with your TIG welding machines. Now I'm just gonna go through a rapid fire of some of my favorite features that I like to have. One is adjustable post flow, which keeps shielding gas flowing after you stop welding. This little TIG welder doesn't have it. It's my biggest complaint about that machine, though it actually still works pretty well. Um, but post flow, you want to have a foot pedal to vary your amperage. That's really nice uh, in so many cases. Um, we already talked about alternating current to weld aluminum. 
pulse will uh, change your amperage higher and lower as you weld along. And that can be nice, but definitely not essential in my opinion. And the last one I'll mention is high frequency arc starting, which means that you don't need to touch the tungsten electrode down to your work to start the arc. It will actually jump a gap. And I have that in these three machines, but not in this multi-process. Well, the last factor we're gonna talk about is cost. And clearly all of the things that we've talked about so far are gonna play into that cost, but there's still a big spread uh, within a particular amperage and type of machine from the highest end to the lowest end. And so it's important to think about whether it's you need to have a particular brand or not. Uh, I've used more Miller machines than any other machine and I really like them, but I'm happy with all the machines here on this table and there are so many good entry level options out there as well. So you just need to consider how much welding you're gonna do, how much uh, factory technical support you think you're gonna want and those types of things and if that's important, um, enough for the additional cost or if you'd rather start with a, you know a regular entry-level machine just real quick Let's talk about multi-process welders They'll a lot of them will do MIG TIG stick flux core all in the same machine like this multi-matic here uh, will do all of those processes um, I've seen a lot of people purchase these expecting to do aluminum TIG welding and then find out that uh, they're not able to because it's direct current on TIG and it's lift arc on TIG, so some of the capability is limited. Now, instead of this, uh, this model, there is one uh, that does output alternating uh, current on TIG, so they are available that uh, do all of it. I, I just want you to shop around and make sure that what you're getting is gonna be able to do what you want it to do because not every multi-process machine will weld every material with every process like, like you'd want to. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in today. If this helped you out at all, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time.